But I do know that they kept yelling at us to come up with another happy together. We were having our own problems. We were going through personnel changes. There were guys in the group that were coming and going. Um, we didn't really need our rhythm guitar player. He was shortly to depart. Uh, we had changed drummers. We had added Johnny Barbada to the group who changed the entire dynamic of the Turtles because he was such a bombastic player. Uh, he was of the caliber of Ainsley Dunbar and those people. One of the best drummers I've ever heard in my life. Wow. And he could spin the sticks just like Dino, only he was better. And Dino will tell you, he was better. Wow. And he played with Crosby Stills, and he played with Journey, and he did all this stuff. You know, he was one of those guys, like Ainsley was. He was one of those guys. They each took each other's jobs eventually. And Barbada added a certain urgency to the band that hadn't been there before and we released a record called Outside Chance that wasn't really a hit but it was a Warren Zevon song. I was going to ask you about that because he's not mentioned in the book. Did you ever meet him or no? Now for you I will tell you. Oh okay okay. He's not Secrets. a meet Okay yes this isn't in the book. Whispers. <laughs> Just like Jimmy Fallon right? Secrets. What the deal was is that <clears throat> <laughs> Let me get a good start on this. Okay. Where to begin this story? Well, Where to begin this story? <laughs> Where should I pick this up? <laughs> Give me a starting place. Yeah. Give me a year and I'll find you. Is it 60, 67, I think? I'm not sure of the year of that single, I have to admit. It's outside chance. Yeah, in 67, what happened was that White Whale Records signed Warren Zevon, actually in 66, I believe, to a songwriting deal. Mm. Um, and he wasn't required to make records, just demos. He made a demo with him and a girl singer, uh, and it was very good. And White Whale, our little record company, released it as a single under the name Lime and Sabelle. It was a record called Follow Me. It was the original Warren song, and it was really good. And we loved this kid. Uh, they introduced us to him, and we treated him as a kid, even though he wasn't. He was a contemporary. He kind of acted like a kid. He was green in show business. He really didn't have a clue what was going on. But he was so brilliant, so talented, such a nice guy mm. that we sort of took him under our wing. When Outside Chance came along, it was just another demo. But it sounded beatly. It sounded really great. It sounded fresh and new to us in a direction that we probably should be in instead of just trying to do You Baby all over again, <laughs> which we attempted at the record company's urging. And we really got close to Warren. I, in particular, got close to Warren. We would take acid constantly. <laughs> we would leave his house, which was way east in Hollywood, and somehow, I don't remember how, whether we hitchhiked or walked or got a ride, we would always wind up sort of at Sunset and Laurel Canyon, where there used to be this place called Pioneer Chicken, which was a big hangout for hookers. <laughs> Cops and hookers, nice. uh, kind of the J uh, James Elroy bunch, and uh, and I loved that. I loved the rough, tough part of L.A., the Raymond Chandler part of L.A. And we were always fucked up. And we were always down there <laughs> laughing and eating these. They used to make these incredible kind of wet roast beef sandwiches down there. And Warren and I on acid were just crazy. <laughs> for them. We would go down and just scarf them down like crazy, and then try to figure out all bloated how we were going to get back to his house because we were on nine tabs of acid <laughs> and we didn't really know which direction west was wow. so it was kind of interesting but we loved the guy so much so much that when our next single came out which was can i get to know you better right. which was indeed a you baby ripoff written by the guy who wrote you baby <laughs> so it wasn't that much he was stealing from himself pf sloan steve barry right. Uh, but it had the drum intro, and it was the cute little pop song, and Barbada yeah. played it better than Don Murray had played it, and it was, it was good. We didn't know how big a record it was going to be. We figured, you know what, instead of writing the B-side and just taking the money and the publishing and stuff, why don't we give it to Warren? Mm. He could really use it. He's a great guy. He's just starting to get a foothold here. Let's help him out. Mm. So we put his song on the B-side of Can I Get to Know You Better? But that record stalled at like number 69 or something on the chart, some cryptic number like that. <laughs> and, uh, and we thought, not so much for ourselves, but for him, oh, what a bummer, man. Mm -hmm. 
we tried to make him some money and and he winds up being on the the crappiest hit record we've ever put out that's not a hit 69 is not a hit record for god's sakes you know well what are we going to do so we felt so badly that we put the same song on the b-side of happy together Ah. it's the b-side of both of those records thinking that well maybe this one will work when in fact what we did was to give away hundreds of thousands of dollars in mechanical royalties for every fucking 45 sold of Happy Together where we could have made writers and publishing money we gave it to Warren and the crooks at the label who owned his publishing the song was called Like the Seasons it was me, it was a guitar and a string quartet it was a beautiful record and uh and I'm glad that Warren got rich off of it, or rich enough at least to hold out until he could sign the record deal that made him a wealthy man mm. until the end. And uh, I still don't regret it, even though I threw away thousands and thousands of dollars, because in Warren's case, with him, I enjoyed every sandwich. Oh, that's, that's very beautiful. That's very poetic. Thank you. I wish I'd have thought of it when I wrote this <laughs> you thing. You put it in the book. I noticed no, it wasn't, wasn't in the book. No, it wasn't in the book.